Sunday morning Adventists. <laughs> Welcome to St. Luke's on this first Sunday of Advent this year. I'm pleased to see everybody. And uh, we have, as you can see, a new format for our bulletin. Uh, as far as the calendar uh, and things, uh, that's a separate sheet now. Um, but for stewardship purposes, I will let you know, we analyze all the different kinds of bulletins we can produce. This is by far the least expensive per page, so just so you know that. But if, if this is the first time you've used it, there's a few tweaks. You're going to find a couple little oopses. But uh, if you see something that we can tweak to make this be better, uh, please just let me know. Okay. So now I'm going to get quiet. I invite everyone to do the same. We get ready to worship God together.
in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead. We may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I made the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days, at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety, and this is the name of which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Thanks be to God. O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let us read portions of Psalm 25 responsibly by half verse, repeating the refrain at the end. And the refrain is after the asterisk. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, my God, I put my trust in you. Let us not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sin of my youth and my transgression. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And he teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. O Lord, I lift up my soul. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel hymn is on page 9, Signs of Endings.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know this summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away till all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard, so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness. And the worries of this life that day catch you unexpectedly, unexpectedly, like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. and Emmanuel, whom we await. Amen. Amen. Well, we begin a new season, of course, Advent. Uh, sometimes churches use purple, we use blue, I use both. Okay. But it's a time when we enter into a season of great expectation, of waiting and, and wondering and hoping and great, I don't know, expectation, I guess is the only word that comes to mind. Now some churches use the purple color, and that's a traditional liturgical color in Advent, but churches over time have, some have gone to a more blue, blue representing Mary and the birth of the child. I prefer the blue not because Christmas and the birth of Jesus is the only thing that we're anticipating, but because I don't see it as a penitential season like Lent. Lent is purple because it's very penitential and we're, we're combing our souls and trying to get cleaned up so we can celebrate Easter as a new person. But in Advent, it's more of a season of anticipation rather than penitence. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't be preparing ourselves and looking in our souls and cleaning up our garbage. But it's more a time to anticipate and get ready for the coming of Jesus. Yes, the coming, certainly on Christmas Day, we have our nativity window back there. I look at it every week, so every week I kind of anticipate this time with the blue window and getting ready for, for Christmas, the birth of Jesus. But as our gospel reading teaches us today, that's not all we're anticipating. We're anticipating the coming of Christ in great, the risen Lord, coming in uh, power and great glory to judge the living and the dead. That time when everything is going to be made different and new, and the kingdom of God will be manifest in its fullness. I don't know what that's going to look like, but it may be kind of scary. It's certainly going to change life as we know it. But what the Gospels, what Jesus is trying to tell us is, that's okay. You have to go through this. These things have to happen first. But just hang in there. Keep faithful. Keep the vision. Keep following Jesus. Do what Jesus tells us to do. 
Be the people of God. And when that happens, if it's in our physical lifetimes or not, we're going to be ready to stand before Christ, who's coming not as a little helpless baby, but as the risen um, sovereign of the whole universe. Now, we hear, we hear this image of Jesus coming on a cloud in more places than here. Think about uh, the cloud is, a, is an image that's used in many, many places in Scripture. And most of the time it represents the, the presence, the fullness, the truth of God. Think about in the Exodus, that when the people were leaving, that God followed them in a cloud and a pillar of fire. That's an image of a cloud. Think about the transfiguration, when Jesus, Peter, James, and John are up on the mountain and they're enveloped by a cloud and they're scared. But it's the presence of God enveloping them up on this transfiguring, transfiguring mountaintop experience. Think about the, uh, where we hear that in the ascension, that Jesus is taken, taken from them in a cloud, taken up to heaven in a cloud. My father one time gave me this wonderful figurine, I don't know if you think of a better word. What is it, like the Bradford Exchange or one of those where you buy sets of commemorative plates and stuff, okay? It was one of those. Could have been actually the Bradford Exchange, but he, he bought me a little thing. It was the Transfiguration, and it was lovely, and it was so thoughtful. But I, I giggled every time I looked at it, frankly, I don't know what it's become, but um, <laughs> Jesus is ascending into heaven. He's standing on a little cloud. So every time I look at it, I would picture Jesus motoring up to heaven on a cloud going, <laughs> That's our human understanding of going up in a cloud, but that's not what the cloud means at all. The cloud is, think about it. Have you ever been in a heavy fog? Have you ever been in the clouds? What's it like? It's quiet. It's like the sound is dampened. You can't see very far. And you know, in a way, it's very peaceful, isn't it? Because all of the distractions of the world aren't available to you right then. Because all you've got is this cloud to be in. And that's the image of God, the presence of God as a cloud. When we hear about the clouds, that's kind of what we enter into. There's this very famous book, some of you may have heard of it or read it even. It's called The Cloud of Unknowing. And this was written back in like the 13th century, 14th century maybe, by an unknown monk who was a mystic and this is kind of a manual on contemplative prayer in a way and the cloud to understand the cloud of unknowing we have to start out um, with first the cloud of forgetting when we enter into prayer if we want to get quiet and be able to hear what God has for us we enter first into a cloud of forgetting, which means we're separated. We have to forget all of the daily distractions, all of the hoopla, all of the noise, our grocery list, our relationship problems, all shopping for Christmas. We have to forget all of that. Let it go. Put it away. It's going to be there when the cloud goes away. Let it go down under this cloud of forgetting. And then we raise our love up to God in a cloud, which is the cloud of unknowing. First, we forget all the earthly distractions, and then we have to unknow all of this to be in the full presence of God. The cloud is, you don't need to know all that other stuff, just be. Jesus comes in a cloud, on a cloud. That means the full presence of God is manifest in that coming, that second coming if you want. Okay, that quiet, peaceful place where none of this earthly garbage matters one hoot. 
Now there's a little quote in here I want to end with from this book about uh, 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 this kind of prayer, this unknowing kind of prayer. And he's, he's talking to, he's, he's trying to train the religious monks and nuns, okay? But this applies to all of us. Attend to tomorrow and let yesterday be. Never mind what you gained so far. Instead, reach out to what lies ahead. If you do this, you will remain in the truth. For now, if you wish to keep growing, you must nourish in your heart the lively longing for God. That's what Advent is, is nourishing our lively desire for God, our anticipation of the baby Jesus, of the, of the risen Lord Christ. Let this season of anticipation be that for you. Try to spend some time every day, every week, whatever works, enter into a cloud of forgetting. Set aside some time to just get quiet and put away all of the season's greetings that are facing us. And longingly anticipate being enveloped in the cloud, which is Now, continuing on page three, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of not faith, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he was made man, for our sake he was crucified. He suffered from death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the judge of the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
I ask your prayers for all who seek God, or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those who have died as children. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those on our prayer list, including Lynn, Shane, Gray, Rose, Alan, Tina, Sharon, Harry, Jim, Sandra, Jerry, Kay, those for whom our prayer chain intercedes, and we pray for any others we may care to now name. Thanksgivings for opportunities to serve the poor and anything else you may now name. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Anglican Episcopal Church of Brazil. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Mark's in Big Timber, Brian Beveridge, Rector. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Grounds and Gardens crew, and for Nancy McManus, Kimberly McNamara, and Jim and Pat Mertz. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son and his coming in glorious majesty, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, God, the word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Then ascribe to the Lord the honor with God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. And we're going to sing the offertory hymn, which is uh, on page 10. How bright appears the morning star.
The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be in peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ was born into the world for you. And feed on Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. We continue to uh, take communion in the bread of all, and be assured it's a full communion. Uh, the chalice bearer will offer it for your devotion.